Let's say that you have plantar fasciitis and you want to know how to get rid of it, how to relieve it, or how to prevent it if you don't want to get it. Well, first of all, we got to talk about what it is. It's when the plantar fascia causes pain in the heel because it's torn or stressed or worn out or any of the above. Now, of course, of course, it's better just to prevent plantar fasciitis from ever happening in the first place. But if you already have it, you're there. Let's see if we can deal with it. So if you have plantar fasciitis, you're going to feel it more in the morning. And then as the day goes on, it's probably going to get a little better. But here's our litmus test to see if we have it or not. It's called heel walks and toe walks. It's very simple. You literally just pick your toes up, start walking on your heels. Now, this litmus test is pretty easy to figure out. If you have pain in your heel while you're doing the heel walks, no good. Another thing to test is if you have any pain while you're doing some toe walks. Again, pretty easy to figure out. If you do a toe walk and you have pain in your heel, not good. So go ahead and pause the video and do this screen, do this litmus test real quick. A quick side note before you get started, if you have pain in your heel, this does not 100% mean that you have plantar fasciitis, but it might be an indicator that you're heading in that direction. So pause the video, carry on. So the first order of business to help relieve some of that tension or prevent it from happening is to loosen up that fascia and those muscles on the bottom of our foot. So you're gonna need a lacrosse ball or a golf ball or a baseball, anything that's spherical, it's gonna be able to hold your body weight. So what you can do is just kind of take it and run it side to side like I just did, or you can just stand on it as hard as you can to put as much body weight on there as possible. And you can see right here, I'm just kind of peeling my foot off to the side of that ball just to try to help loosen up that arch of my foot. So I want you guys to go ahead and do two minutes on each foot. Go ahead and pause the video and smash out the bottom of your foot. The next step is we're going to travel up your leg a little bit and we're going to smash out your calves. Now that might sound kind of funny if you have heel pain, but check this out. Your calves and your shins are the puppet masters for what your feet are doing. So we're going to do a calf smash. You can see I just have my calf right there on top of that foam roller and I'm just flicking my foot five times and then I'm trying to draw as big a circle as I can clockwise and counterclockwise just to help loosen up those calves because they do dictate what's going on around my foot. Now, if you need a little bit more help, pick your butt up off the ground and drape that other foot across your leg to put more pressure on that calf. And again, just flicking my foot and rotating it in each direction five times. And this is just gonna help loosen up my calves so that I can hopefully provide a little bit more slack to the bottom of my foot because your calves run right into that plantar fascia. Now, if you need some more aggressive calf smashing, Put a lacrosse ball on your foam roller or on any elevated surface and do the same exact thing. Just slap that foot, rotate it in each direction five times. And this is another one of those, if this hurts really bad, just stay right here. But if you can add a little bit more oomph to it, try to pick your butt up off the ground. So what I want you guys to do is hang out on each calf for two to three minutes. If you have really tight calves and this does not feel good, then hang out there for three minutes on each side. Otherwise, just go for two. You guys go ahead and pause the video, smash out those calves. This next stretch is called the elevated kneeling stretch. So you're gonna need to prop your foot up on something. It could be a sofa, it could be a chair from your dining room, whatever. But what you're gonna do is have your heel hanging off the side. And what you're gonna do is basically try to put your entire body weight right over the ball of your foot. So you're trying to force that knee as far forward as you can and your heel will pop up and that's okay. And you're gonna feel a stretch basically anywhere from your calf into the bottom of your foot around your heel and you want that back leg to basically just drop straight down now as you're doing this don't let that knee cave in that's no good you want to make sure that knee is going off to the side and you're trying to put basically as much weight as you can on the ball of your foot go ahead and pause the video and do two minutes on each leg So now we're gonna move up the chain a little bit and we're gonna smash out your quads and I'll go into a little bit more detail later, but basically all you're trying to do right here is 
just wail on the front side of your leg. Now, if you can go after it with both legs and that feels pretty intense, stay there. But if you can isolate one leg at a time like I'm doing here and I just have one leg kind of going off to the side, that's gonna give you a little bit more intense smashing, a little bit more relief to your quads. Now, the other thing you can do is you can just bend your knee, just keep that foam roller in one spot and bend your knee and just kind of work your way up, bend your knee, work your way up, bend your knee. And the idea is you're just trying to loosen up that quad as much as possible. Now, if you wanna make it more aggressive, use a lacrosse ball. Now, you're probably not going to be doing a whole bunch of rolling as you do this. You're more than likely just going to need to do this bend the knee option. So bend the knee, move it up a little bit, bend the knee, move it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and spend three minutes on each quad. Pause the video, let's make it happen. After you hammer your quads for a little bit, let's move up to our glutes. So this one, you're gonna use your foam roller and you can see that I've crossed, I'm smashing out my left glute. So I'm gonna bring my left leg and drape it over my right knee. And this is just going to help expose more of that tissue so that I can really get it loose. And I'm, again, gonna go over this a little bit more in detail why you wanna do that here in just a little bit. If you need to make it more aggressive, grab that lacrosse ball, same thing. Just kind of pick those hips up and just go from basically the side of your butt towards your crack. Just be mindful where that ball is at. So go ahead and do two minutes on each glute. If you need to make it more aggressive, feel free to drape that leg over just like we did for the foam roller. Pause the video, smash out those glutes. Right, so we've done a lot of really good stretching and now we need to wake the leg up the way it's supposed to be working so that we prevent plantar fasciitis from ever even happening. So all I'm doing right here are some foot circles. I'm literally just drawing the biggest circle that I can with my foot. It's nothing super crazy. I want you to go ahead and do two minutes for each leg. Go ahead and pause the video, make it happen. The second activation we're going to do to prevent plantar fasciitis is a glute bridge. Now, you might be asking yourself, what on earth does something down here have to do with something up here? Here's the thing, gang. If your glutes aren't working, that means everything downstream from your knees down to your toes is going to be in a really bad biomechanical position, which means that areas like your foot and your heel are going to be taking a lot more stress than they really need to because your glutes aren't pulling their weight like they need to. So with that in mind, we have to wake these glutes up so that they can actually take stress off of the lower parts of our body. So I want you to hang out in this glute bridge for three minutes. You gotta break it up, that's fine, go for it. But accumulate three minutes focusing very intently on making sure your butt cheeks are holding you at the top. Pause the video, get them in there. This last activation, I'm stealing the name straight from the yogis. This is a short foot, and we're just gonna do an isometric short foot. Now notice, I basically just grabbed the ground with my foot and focused on bringing that arch up as high as I can. So that's all I'm doing is just grabbing the ground. So another way to think about it is basically smash a penny with the ball of your foot and try to raise the arch up like you're trying not to touch the top of a pin. Now notice how much my leg is moving when I grab the ground with my foot like that. I am rotating my entire leg when I'm doing that. And this is why this is so important because you're basically retraining the bottom of your foot to stabilize the built-in suspension that is the bottom of your foot. I want you guys to accumulate three minutes on each side, just grabbing the ground, relaxing, grabbing the ground, relaxing. You can do both feet at the same time if you'd like. Pause the video, get that short foot in there. All right, now's where the rubber meets the road. So with that short foot that you just practiced, I want you to integrate it into a squat. So I don't know if you just noticed that, but I grabbed the ground with my foot before I even started, and I'm trying to maintain that short foot position the entire time I'm doing this squat. So we'll go ahead and zoom in so you can actually see what my foot is doing. I'm grabbing the ground, making that short foot happen, and I'm trying to maintain that position the entire range of motion. This isn't just making the bottom of my foot stronger, it's helping me stretch out my calves and strengthen everything in and around my shins, my glutes, everything, gang. So what I want you to do is I want you to do 15 total squats. Don't rush these. Notice my feet are grabbing the ground, my, if you really pay attention, you can notice my left side is not as good at this as my right side is, and that's okay. Everyone's gotta start somewhere, right? So I want you to grab the ground with your feet as hard as you can and accumulate 
15 reps. Don't go super fast. Keep it nice and controlled and only go down so far as you can keep everything nice, stable, and tight. Now, I'm going to show you what it looks like whenever your feet collapse on you as you're doing this squat. So let's go ahead and zoom in real fast. If you're going down, boom, you see what that has happened? I just completely collapsed that arch and with my collapsed arch came my knees right behind me. So if you're doing these squats and all of a sudden you feel like your knees are completely collapsing right there, it's probably because my feet weren't able to hold that position and my glutes weren't able to help. Right, so it all ties into each other, gang. Now I want you to go ahead and pause this video and knock out those 15 squats. Take your time, be patient, have at it. All right, we've gone through several stretches, some activation exercises, and we've integrated it into a bigger movement pattern. Now it's time to go back to our litmus test, our heel walks, and see if we feel better, same, or worse. Now go through your toe walk, same thing. Is it better, same, or worse? Gang, I hope this video has helped you. If you have plantar fasciitis, I hope that you got a little bit of relief out of it. If you don't, and you're just trying to prevent it, these are the steps you need to take in order to prevent it from ever happening. Of course, gang, if you are having some serious issues, please go visit your medical professional, go visit your doctor, and get this thing checked out. If you like this video, please be sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date when we post our new videos, which is typically on Thursdays. You guys move well. Thanks for hanging out with us. Have a great day.